Welcome back. After 28 years, the United States has established its first diplomatic presence in Somalia. The State Department said the historic event reflected the progress the East African nation has made. Ambassador Donald Yamamoto will be heading the embassy in Mogadishu, which was previously based in Nairobi, Kenya. The United States closed its embassy in Somalia in January 1991 amid fighting between rebels and the government and had to airlift out its ambassador and staff. The United Nations mission in South Sudan has reinforced its human rights team in Bentiu to help with investigations following a series of brutal sexual attacks on women and girls. Reports on the attacks came to light after the charity group Doctors Without Borders announced they had received the women and young girls who were travelling from their villages at their clinics in the region. Over the past two weeks, approximately 125 women and girls had sought medical treatment after being raped or sexually assaulted in a 10-day period as they walked along the roads near Nialdu and Guit on their way to Bentui. That number has now reportedly risen to over 150. The UN mission in South Sudan, UNMIS, is concerned about this and is out to find a solution. The reality of uh, using uh, rape as a weapon of war is, is there and there is no need to, to contest it. What is more important is, more important is, is really to look at what we can do to address this issue. And I think uh, it's, it's good that now uh, various parties to the conflict are sitting together so that they can sit together and see how together they can find a solution to that uh, situation. It is alleged that the attacks have been carried out by young men in civilian clothing or military uniforms. In addition to be sexually violated, they were also brutally beaten and robbed. If you are looking at the, the number of uh, rape cases that we have already registered, uh, it's more than 150. And uh, basically, uh, especially in this uh, specific context where we had seen some decrease in terms of violation and abuses and rape cases because of the, somehow because of the of the signing of the revitalized peace agreement it is really a pity to see that uh, this is happening right now and if you are looking at the figures the figures are very high and this is not acceptable of course and we need to do something about it unmiss which has a protection of civilians mandate, has deployed daily patrols in the area where the attacks were reported to have taken place. The mission is also urging armed forces in the area to guarantee command and control over their troops to ensure rogue elements within their ranks are not involved in these criminal acts. Uh, the situation is, uh, is uh, to say the least, horrendous. It is very, very depressing. And um, ironically, it's happening uh, during uh, the 16 days of activism. South Sudan spiraled into armed conflict at the end of 2013. Parties to the bitter near five-year conflict are currently engaged in pre-transitional arrangements as they try to implement a peace agreement penned in Addis Ababa in September 2018. Kenya has appointed a top British lawyer, Kawara Qureshi, as a prosecutor in charges of corruption cases against high-profile individuals. In a statement, the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution said the stakes in such cases are very high and therefore it is necessary that the proceedings are insulated from public perceptions of political interferences. Dozens of civil servants and top business people are facing corruption charges. One of the high-profile cases is that of Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Mwilu, who was arrested in August on suspicion of corruption and failure to pay tax. In Ethiopia, protests have continued for a third day in parts of the Oromia region with young men on the streets of Buruyu near the capital Addis Ababa, as well as in the west of the country. Some are calling for an end to ethnic clashes, which since October have left close to 50 people dead, including police officers. But there is also anger that local officials linked to human rights abuses of the former government are still in their post. When the reformist Prime Minister Abiy Hamid came to power in April, two years of huge countrywide protest ended. The local media says many Ethiopians are impatient for further reforms, that more protests are planned and pressure is increasing on the government. 
The United Nations Entity for Gender Equality and the Empowerment of Women has called on traditional rulers across Africa to join the fight in eradicating female genital mutilation and child marriage. Reps of UN Women will dialogue with traditional rulers on their roles in educating members of their communities on the dangers posed by the practice. For centuries, female genital mutilation and child marriage have been considered a traditional practice in many parts of Africa. The physical and psychological trauma inflicted on the victims lasts a lifetime. <laughs> Although in recent times the numbers have been reducing due to proper education, still the practice continues in some quarters. The United Nations estimates that at least 200 million girls and women living in 30 countries have undergone female genital mutilation. For I am ambitious, inquisitive, I am outspoken and I am proud. I will refuse forced marriages because I have a choice. And I will speak out when I am raped because it's not my shame. I have a right to be educated. I have a right to be consulted. I have a right to experience childhood and I have a right to attain my very full potential. This to further educate and inform people on the dangers of female genital mutilation and child marriage, the United Nations Women Conference in 2018 focuses on ending the practice by talking with traditional and cultural rulers. Having all of you here gathered here today is a strong demonstration of the commitment of you, the traditional and religious leaders, to support the efforts of UN women and other stakeholders to end early marriage and female genital mutilation. I trust that your commitment will help to a new global spotlight and re-energize the movement to end child marriage and force marriages and female genital mutilation to be specific. It is a culture that I beg you, our royal fathers, and our royal mothers to do away with. But we want you to do it because you have the authority and you have the power, you have the yam, you have the knife. I'm sure you would not want your daughters to go through what some of us have gone through. I'm sure you will want your daughters to rise up to positions like where we are by defying culture. We just look forward to your partnership. We are standing behind you because we are royal fathers, we will do exactly what you want. So tell us what you want, how you want us to support you, and we will do it. But we need that pronouncement from you. Stand For the next two days, representatives of the United Nations yes, Women will back. be meeting with traditional and cultural leaders and to dialogue and propose again. a framework for agreements, which will then be presented in January 2019 genital at the African mutilation. Union Summit on the Elimination of Female Genital Jenny, Mutilation uh, and Child Marriage in Nigeria and all of Africa. From Lagos, Nigeria, Tosin Additional, reporting for Channels Television News. And that's it on the program. Thanks for watching. I'm Teniola Shubuwale.